Well, hello everyone. I want to welcome you back to our channel. And um, before we go too far, don't forget if you have not subscribed yet to um, click on the bell um, and make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you can get um, all of our videos, all of Steve's videos. Because remember that our goal, our job here is to provide you with uh, independent documentation and uh, give you the information, really arm you and prepare you to be able to make the right decision uh, for your future, for your business in the mortgage protection life insurance business. And so we're excited that you're here. And also don't forget to leave some comments or give us a thumbs up because we love that. Let's jump in today. So here's what we're going to talk about today. And I like to do, I, I try to kind of keep some of my videos or the majority of my videos kind of wrapped around um, the underwriting and some of the technical side of uh, what you're going to be doing and what you might be dealing with in mortgage protection slash life insurance slash final expense. And what I wanted to talk about today was something that I've encountered a couple of times. We've had agents that have encountered it kind of repeatedly in the course of the last week or two. And that is, what do you do when you have a client that on the surface appears to only have one or two conditions that irrespective of each other, um, they are pretty mundane, right? So I'll give you an example. I had an agent that contacted me. Um, he had booked an appointment with a client and these were, this was the scenario. So she was a 37 or 39 year old female. Um, she was, we did not know her build. Uh, so we didn't know height and weight. And we'll come back to that because that's going to be important. Uh, she was on three medications for blood pressure, two or three medications for blood pressure. She had had knee surgery back surgery, um, and she was also dealing with a thyroid issue. Now, on their surface, none of those things individually is really anything that even a simplified issue company would, would have much issue with. Blood pressure medications, not a big deal. Uh, something like 70% of the population over the age of 45 is on some sort of a treatment regimen for blood pressure. So blood pressure pills, you know, we see that in most of the client sheets that, that we see. So let's take the second thing, thyroid. Thyroid is a very common issue, okay? So a lot of people don't have their thyroid anymore. Um, a lot of people have issues with their thyroid. So again, someone with thyroid issues, not a big deal. Knee surgery, back surgery, lots of people with joint issues, back surgeries. I mean, I deal with clients all the time that have had multiple back surgeries. A very good friend of ours who's also a client just had back surgery. It's not, not uncommon and neither are the knees, right? Joints and the back are, are pretty common things. But here's what I want to warn you about. To, to be conscious of looking at the big picture because what is, what does this potentially tell us about this person? We have a relatively young female with blood pressure issues to the point where she's on more than one medication, um, thyroid issues, knee surgeries, back surgeries. She's relatively young. Uh, what can we kind of guess about this client? Um, we can guess that she is probably dealing with a weight issue. Um, when you combine all of those things together, combined with her age, She's very young to be dealing with those types of issues. Again, if she had had one or two of the issues, um, it might not have told us anything about her. But when you combine all of those together, it's an important thing to notice. Here's another scenario. Um, I have lots of, I'm sure you do too, uh, have clients all the time that um, are on a blood pressure medication. And then as we're going through um, you know, that qualification process before the appointment, They'll start talking about things like, well, I take a blood pressure pill. And then they'll say, my doctor has me taking a baby aspirin. And then they'll say, well, my doctor has me on a water pill. Um, and when we, again, exclusively, those individual um, medications or situations are not really that big of a deal. But when we combine all of them together and we step back a little bit, what does that potentially tell us? It tells us that this person might have heart issues. And so that's a great opportunity for you as an agent to stop and make sure that if you are pre-qualifying your clients, if you're doing that no before you go, that you ask them 
um, that you, you might want to dig a little bit deeper. You don't want to end up in a home processing an application for somebody that's going to be declined um, when we could have simply asked a few more questions and maybe put them into a product that would have suited them better. So my advice in that situation would be to say to your, to your prospective client, um, in the past, at any point, um, have you ever had a heart attack, angioplasty, had a stent placed, had pacemaker issues, um, had uh, blood pressure issues to the point of them being, it being out of control? Um, so important questions to ask to kind of dig a little bit. Uh, I don't, when I'm booking an appointment with a client and going through that pre-qualification, I do not ask that client. I, I don't go into what they might qualify for. I don't discuss that, you know, this, this is going to be difficult or they might not qualify for anything or gosh, I'm not sure you might only qualify for final expense. I don't go down that path. But it is my job as an agent to figure out how much information can I glean in a short amount of time on the phone to be able to um, then get off the phone. I've, I've, I've set up my appointment date and time. Um, I've, I'm, I'm all set there. And now I have as much know before you go info as I can possibly get so that I can go in and be prepared in front of that client. It's very frustrating and it's very disheartening for, um, for your potential clients to be in a position where they've given you this information and because you didn't ask enough questions or maybe the right questions and maybe didn't do a little more homework with some of your carriers or your underwriters um, and you go in and try and present them with the same thing that the other agents have presented them with and they can't qualify for it. So it's very important. Um, you know, the, one of, the, one of the, um, the mantras that we have on our team, one of our slogans, one of our hashtags is be a better agent. Um, and I'll encourage you to comment on this video because then I'll know you like it. Uh, comment on this video with hashtag be a better agent because ultimately, whether it's um, our job working with you, if you're, if you're agents that work with us, or with whomever you work with, or if you're just an agent um, that may be new to this industry and you want to go out there and do a good job and earn a good living and do well and right by your clients, that really should be something at the forefront of your mind. In fact, at the bottom of my computer monitor, I have it taped, that same, um, that same saying, be a better agent. And all of those that, that really encompasses all of those things that I've just talked about, and that is... Um, you know, digging a little bit deeper with your clients, finding out a little bit more about them, finding out about their families, finding out about their health history, find out about, you know, what kind of prescriptions they may have taken in the past, find out about other things that they may have dealt with because um, you want to show your client that you have done your homework, that you've done your due diligence, that you have really worked to find out all that you can before you sit in front of them. So let's do one more and then uh, we'll wrap it up. You may have someone that was diagnosed with uh, diabetes, okay? And so let's just say for the sake of argument that they're on insulin um, and maybe they were diagnosed after the age of 50. And as you're, again, going through that, that kind of know before you go qualification, you might ask them, um, you know, what prescription medica medications do you take? Um, and I always separate the questions of, um, you know, medical impairments or medical issues from prescriptions. Because um, some people, got to think the way other people think, um, some people uh, don't associate themselves as having a medical problem if they're taking a medication that controls it. So I have, um, I've had people on the phone, clients on the phone that will say, I'll say, are you, do you have any medical, pro medical problems at this time? And they'll say, no, I'm, I'm actually in really good health. And then we'll start going through that, um, that prescription list, right? And they'll say, well, I take a, a medication for high blood pressure, and um, I take a medication uh, called metformin. Um, as soon as you hear that word metformin, that go back and watch my diabetes video because that's your little bell that they are diabetic, pre-diabetic. Um, and again, insurance companies don't care between prediabetes and diabetes. They uh, are going to associate the medication with what they're being treated for. So that's a situation where, you know, if you are not really kind of building up that mental muscle memory 
uh, that's say that one three times fast, that mental muscle memory of different uh, prescription drugs that you're going to hear pretty consistently um, to be able to associate that with what somebody with a medical condition somebody might not be telling you about. So, you know, if you have a client that um, tells you that they're taking metformin and they're taking a blood pressure medication and um, they're taking, they take a medication for pain, as someone says, as soon as someone says they take a medication for pain, pain in their feet, pain in their, um, in their fingers um, or in their hands um, and they're diabetic, very important to kind of follow up with that a little bit. Have you ever had any complications from your diabetes? And here's why that's important, because um, diabetes frequently causes nerve damage. And um, when someone is taking a drug like gabapentin in conjunction with uh, medications that will treat diabetes, and you pair those two together, it now gives us an indication of somebody whose diabetes is not currently under control or may, might not have been at some point in the past. And again, the last thing that you want to do is get a phone call or an email from an underwriter asking you, um, you know, does your client, has your client had complications from their uh, diabetes or do they have, have they had a heart attack or an issue in the past? Um, or an email or a phone call saying, you know what, we're going to have to decline your client and get blindsided. And then you have to go in and explain to your client that, um, you know, I, I just, I, I didn't ask enough information. In all fairness, a lot of times clients think that if they don't tell you something that it's not really true or you won't be able to find it out. Trust me guys, these underwriters at insurance companies, it's their job to make sure that they are underwriting a good solid file. So my advice to you is um, do a little more digging and encourage your clients to be honest and upfront with you. You know, what I always tell my clients is I work with 15 or 20 different insurance companies. So you know what? The more honest you are with me about what prescriptions you've taken uh, in the past or currently, what ailments or, or um, medical issues you've had, again, current or in the past, it's really, really important for us to be on the same page because uh, I can then put you with the right company, right? All that makes sense? So I hope that this was helpful. Um, don't forget, uh, mash the bell, subscribe to the channel so that you can get our ongoing videos. Steve puts up videos on a pretty constant basis, I think one or two a week. I will be back with you again soon and we'll talk more underwriting. Hope this was fun. Have a great day everyone.